welcome to this special edition Christmas special of Storytime with Jocelyn. Today, we're going to read What God Wants for Christmas, which is an interactive story where we're going to open gifts and build the stable scene for Christmas. And you'll be able to see the finished product at the end. And you'll also be able to find out what God wants for Christmas from you. This is our fireplace. I thought it would be a nice setting, even though there's no fire. We're in Houston. It's not, well, right now it's a little chilly, but to me it's not. I love cold. But we have a fireplace. And last year, Santa dropped one of his elf's boots in our home. So we're leaving it here by the fireplace, hoping that Santa will pick it up this year. Right, Jocelyn? I'm sorry we're posting this a day late. I promised to post it yesterday, but I took time to try to find my Santa hat. And of course I didn't find it, so I'm stuck to being a book lover today, which of course is me. So let us begin, <clears throat> excuse me, by opening our first gift about what God wants for Christmas. And then that is gift number one, which is in this beautiful orange package. Let's find out what is in here. We have an angel and his name is Gabriel. We're gonna read a poem about Gabriel and we're gonna stick him right here on top of the stable because he watched over baby Jesus that morning. And it says in this poem, Jocelyn, in the beginning, God started to plan to bring about Christmas, and it would be grand. Here we would launch a gift-giving tradition. I'll tell you how it started, so please pay attention. But before we get to this story's heart, let me explain how I play a part. I was involved a long time ago as angel and speaker. It's God's words, I know. For I stand in his presence, I'm Gabriel, and God wants you to know and hear the story I tell. For my words will offer his great gift to you, and you'll know what he wants when the story is through. What God wants for Christmas, it's to you out there a surprise. In box number seven, which is yellow, it is disguised, but no peeking, Jocelyn, be patient. For this you must wait. It's what you offer him, Jocelyn, and you out there, it's really great. And it says in our Holy Bible, and that a beautiful edition, in Luke chapter one, hopefully I could get there pretty quick. I hope y'all are having a Merry Christmas and a great holiday. And it says in chapter 26, I mean, chapter one, verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God onto a city of Galilee, named Nazareth. So that is where Gabriel showed up. All right. So now we're gonna go off to open gift number two, which is a beautiful, beautiful blue and in gift number two we have Mary and we're going to put Mary over here on the right because in pictures I've seen her usually on the right I've seen her on the left you just never know so for Mary, we're going to start by reading something in the Old Testament where it was foretold about Mary. And that's going to be found in Isaiah chapter 7. And it says this in verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then it says in Luke chapter one, which will start in verse 26 and continue into verse 38. 
Actually, we'll start in verse 27 because we were we read already 26. And it says, To the virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hell, that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth the son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born in thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Right, Jocelyn? And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, and it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And I was going to show you this beautiful picture in the Bible of the angel descending upon Mary. Isn't that beautiful? All right. Now we shall go and read the poem about Mary. And it says this, this story began when Isaiah did tell that a virgin should give birth to Emmanuel. That name is special. It means God with us. And one day in this child, many would trust. So when the time came, I was appointed to tell the young woman that she was anointed. That's Gabriel talking. I said to her, Mary, you're God's chosen one, and you will give birth to God's only son. How can this be? For this isn't typical. Indeed, it's not. We call it a miracle. God's Holy Spirit will help you give birth to God in the flesh. He'll live here on earth. God says to name this baby boy Jesus. Mary said, yes, may God do as he pleases. For I am his servant and I will obey so God can use me in this special way. What God wants for Christmas, it's to you a surprise. In box number seven, the yellow one, it is disguised. Jocelyn, no peeking. Be patient. For this you must wait. It's what you out there offer him and it's really great. So now we're going to go off and open the green number three gift. And in here we find Mary's husband, Joseph. And we're gonna put him right on the other side of here. And we're going to read in the Holy Bible, chapter Matthew, chapter one. Got to get over there. Here we go. And we're going to start reading in verse 18 until the end of chapter one. And it says this. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the rise. When his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being just a man, was not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And you shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. 
Now all this was done and it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel with being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sheep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. And that is Joseph. Now let's read his poem and what it says. Right, Jocelyn? It says, Sweet Mary now knew she'd be Jesus' mother, but mom needs some help. She needed another. And Jesus would soon need a hair on earth dad. God knew all that. Here's the plan that he had. God had a man named Joseph in mind. He'd make a good husband who's loving and kind. So one night God sent an angel to speak instructions to Joseph while he laid asleep. Joseph, take Mary. He shall be good wife. This marriage is still God's plan for your life. God's spirit had given her a baby within. His name will be Jesus and he'll save you from sin. What God wants for Christmas, it's to you out there and to Jocelyn a surprise in box number seven. What color is it? Yellow. It is disguised, but no peeking Jocelyn, be patient. For this you must wait. It's what you offer him and you out there. And it's really great. Now I've been forgetting to show y'all these pretty pictures. So I'm gonna show you the picture of Gabriel. And here is the picture of Mary. And now you've got the picture of the angel speaking to a sleeping Joseph in his dream. And now we are going to open gift number four, which is white. And in here, we have the most precious gift. Then it was, and that is baby Jesus in a manger. They stayed in the stable because they had no room for him and their, his parents in the inn. So he's going to be in the middle of his parents, Mary and Joseph. Oops. There we go. And it says in the Holy Bible in chapter 2 of Luke. Let me get there. Sorry about that. Here we go. And we're going to be reading verses 1 through 7. And it says, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went, and all went to be taxed, everyone onto his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea onto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his exposed wife, get, being great with child. And it was so that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she sought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and I'm going ahead of myself. And the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were sown afraid. And I'll end up reading that again. Sorry, I was a little ahead of myself a couple of verses. <laughs> So let's read about baby Jesus and his poem. And it says, after a while, there came a decree, go back where you're from originally. So this couple set out to Bethlehem town where they arrived. They looked all around, but the inns were too full. 
No room for two guests and Mary was tired and she needed rest. All rooms are taken, the innkeeper said, but then an idea popped in his head. My stable's not much, but there you can stay. I'll give you this major, a feed throw with hay. And later on, there in the quiet of night, to Joseph and Mary's excited delight. And here is them going to the town of Bethlehem. She gave birth to God's son. It was not a surprise. God said it would happen and he never lies. God gave the first gift that Christmas, first Christmas day. He gave us the Christ, the babe in the hay. And that is not all. God wants something grand. An offering to him, the point of his plan. What God wants for Christmas, Jocelyn, it's to you out there a surprise in box number seven. It is disguised, but no peeking. Be patient, for this you must wait. It's what you offer them out there, and it's really great. And here is Mary and Joseph with baby Jesus. And now we get to offering God, uh, gift number five, and it's like a turquoise teal blue color. And in this box, we have where I was going a little bit ahead of myself, the shepherd. And that's where we will continue the story. We will put him over here with his sheep, because we have some sheep here on the stable. You'll get to see this in the end of the video. And so that's where we'll put the shepherd. And then we will read where I was going ahead of myself in Luke chapter two, starting again with verse eight. And there we're in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not, behold, I bring you great tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto, unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel of multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And they had heard it wondered at these things, which was told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. And it was told unto them. And this is when the shepherds and the people came to see Jesus and Mary and Joseph. Isn't that a beautiful picture? At the stable and seeing Jesus in the manger. All right. Now we get to read the poem about the shepherd. And it says, During the night when all was quite still, shepherds were sheep watching out on a hill. A savior is born, boomed. A rushing wind voice, a herald messiah. It's time to rejoice. Now what stood before them, an angel in white, with eyes full of fire and statue of might? Go to Bethlehem now, in a stable you'll find, a babe in a manger, that is your sign. Then finding a stable where they saw a light, shine through the warboards and into the night. The shepherds looked in, and what did they see? The manger, a baby! They fell to their knees. So this must be him, this is the sign. They had found Jesus, the Savior divine. 
These shepherds joined in the first celebration of Christmas because of this grand revelation. What God wants for Christmas, it's to you a surprise. In box number seven, it is disguised, but no peeking. Be patient, for this you must wait. But what you offer him, and it's really great. And then we have a picture of the shepherds and their sheep. Now we get to open box number six, which is purple. And in box number six, we have a wise king or a wise man. And I'm going to put him over here, looking upon the baby on the other side. And I'm gonna read you the poem first, and then we'll go into the Holy Bible. And it says this, Now way in the east lived some men who were wise. They saw a new star when they looked to the skies. This must be the star written here in our book. It tells of a king. Let's go take a look. So they followed the star till it finally rested where Mary the mother and Jesus were nested. When they stepped inside, they all fell to the floor to worship the king, but there it was still more. These wise men gave him frankincense, myrrh, and fine gold to honor the one whose new star had foretold. Then in a dream, they learned not to go back. By way of King Herod, he planned to attack. So they chose to go home a different way. The child's location they did not betray. As Mary thought through these events in her mind, she said, God is so loving, protected, and kind. What God wants for Christmas, it's to you out there, a surprise in box number seven, which is our last one. It is disguised, but no peeking. Be patient, for this you must wait. It's what you offer him, and it's really great. And here we got the wise men, and here, I think right here is really pretty, where we have the star. And now we're going to read in the Holy Bible the story in Matthew, and it says in chapter two, Verses 1 through 12. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is that that born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judea art not least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them, diligently what time the star appeared and he sent them to Bethlehem and said go and search diligently for the young child and when ye have found him bring me word again that I may come and worship him also and when they had heard the king they departed and lo the star which had saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And God, being warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And it says in Luke chapter 2, verse 19, And they all heard that had heard it wondered at those things which were told by the shepherds. And here is a beautiful picture of the wise men going forth to Jesus. 
And that is the Holy Bible story. And now we get to go off and open gift number seven. Are y'all so excited? Here we go. Box number seven. What God wants for Christmas. Now here's the surprise. In box number seven, where it's been disguised, let's peek in the box. For so long you have waited. What God wants is you, the one he created. Now, if you will do me a favor and find yourself a mirror, because all you're going to see is in this mirror is pretty much the other side of my house <laughs> and the camera. <laughs> but Jocelyn will be able to look in the mirror and see herself because what God wants for Christmas, once you look into the mirror, is the one he created, which is you, which is Jocelyn, which is me, which is you all out there. The one you see in the mirror. Me, you ask, why is this so? I cannot wrap me and put on a bow. No, you cannot. But what you can give are the choices you make and the life that you live. God wants you to know him and love him within. And this is called worship, an offering to him. To do this, trust Jesus who died in your place when you didn't deserve him. That is called grace. Amazing grace. Pray now and offer your life in your heart. Say, Jesus, I need you. I'd like a new start. Forgive me today for the sins I've committed. So one day in heaven, I will be permitted. When you pray this decision, the heavens rejoice that you have made worship of God your life's choice. God wants you to know him. So choose every day to love God and thank God and give him all praise. And that is what God wants for Christmas. And I'm going to leave you with a couple of verses from the Holy Bible. And one, everyone should know and memorize because it is God's gift to us. And that is John 3, 16, which says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe it in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And it also says in Romans, let me get to Romans, chapter 12, verse 1, it says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we should serve God and be proud to do that because he serves us forever when he loves us. I hope y'all enjoyed learning what God wants for Christmas and I will show you at the end of this video a beautiful transition of what the major that Jesus laid in inside the stable because there was no room for him at the end and what Christmas really means and what it's about. Happy birthday, Jesus. He came to save us. Merry Christmas, everybody, and I will see you again on Friday with another Christmas story. Bye-bye.